Dubious Ones, welcome back. Today I'm going to do something a little different on the channel, just a little brief breakdown of what we saw last night during AEW um, Wrestle Dream. You know, it was a great pay-per-view. Obviously, we have a lot coming out of it. The main thing being, obviously, Adam Copeland, also known, of course, as Edge in WWE, has officially signed with AEW. And I just wanted to give uh, my brief thoughts on the pay-per-view and the event as a whole. Um, as usual, my thoughts with AEW as far as pay-per-views go, the pay-per-views, the matches themselves, always blow me out of the water. Absolutely, 100%, they over-deliver, but I always find going into the pay-per-views that the story's leading up and the storylines aren't given enough time. There's so many matches you see on Dynamite and Collision every week, um, but for this pay-per-view specifically... I did like that we did get a little bit more build to some of the matches. Not everything, but I was a fan of the fact that I felt like there was more story going into some of the matches that I was most excited for. Um, first of all, I want to talk about one of my favorite matches in particular, um, uh, specifically because I thought of some of the some of uh, their greatest promo work in AEW to date um, was Swerve Strickland and um, Adam Page. I thought it was a great build. Um, could it have been better? Sure. But I mean, as far as for Swerve Strickland's work in AEW, I think it's his best work to date. I think he's been consistently getting better. He's one of these stars that I've been wanting to see get more of a push since he's signed with AEW, him and Keith Lee uh, both. But I thought that match was absolutely spectacular. Um, just a coming out party for Swerve Strickland. I personally would have preferred if we didn't have the foot on the ropes, Prince Nana obviously getting caught, that nonsense BS. I I mean, I get that Swerve's the heel, but he was getting that amazing hometown reaction. Hangman was being booed out of the building. They could have maybe called an audible. I don't know. But I just, that one little piece, I was thinking, you know what? You didn't need to do that to, str to Swerve. I think he could have given this one a clean win. Um, regardless, I love the match. I think it was the right outcome. I think he should have won in his hometown. He was really getting that hometown hero reaction, and I really, really enjoyed that match. Um, some of the other matches I actually thought were phenomenal were actually on the pre-show. Um, I really enjoyed the eight-man tag um, early on. I thought Keith Lee got a chance to shine, looked really good in the match. I thought the women looked great. I think Athena is someone that we're not getting enough on Dynamite and collision every week i would really like to see athena pushed further i think she's got one of the coolest looking finishers in all of wrestling and i've always thought that since she i first saw her as ember moon in nxt uh, that's just such a cool finish right like the aerial stunner from the top rope so cool so cool um but i really enjoyed that match um as well as the josh barnett and claudio castagnoli match on the on the pre-show was absolutely amazing um, what made it way better for me was actually having John Moxley on commentary, letting us know that he trains with Josh Barnett. That's where he gets a lot of his submission style from. Um, the fact that they train together, they're friends. It really came across in the broadcast and in his commentary during the match, seeing him get excited, hearing that he got fined for all the swearing he did during the commentary. And then when he commentated later on during the pay-per-view, um, during those matches, still could, <laughs> couldn't control himself. And was still dropping F-bombs and swearing uh, during his commentary for the Blackpool Combat Club members matches. I thought it was great. It added a little bit of flavor. Something different. Uh, we don't usually get to hear John Moxley in that way. I thought it was uh, really refreshing. And I actually really, really enjoyed it. Loved the match. Loved the finish. Um, just everything about that Claudio and Josh Barnett match was a pleasant surprise. And something I look for on a pay-per-view like this. Where you're not just getting your cookie-cutter AEW these guys in a feud match here. These guys in a feud. What I love about AEW is you do get those dream matches. You get the Zack Sabre Jr. against Brian Danielson. And to me, a Josh Barnett, someone you never see on AEW, wrestling a, someone of the caliber of a Claudio Castagnoli. To me, fantastic stuff. Absolutely loved it. If you hadn't watched the pre-show, go on YouTube. Go to the AEW channel. Check it out. It was incredible. I really loved that as well. Um, the acclaimed in their uh, trios tag title match. Not a lot to say. Obviously, the claim, the acclaimed were over. It was an undercard match. It was what you'd expect. They got a great ovation. Max's rap at the beginning was quite funny. I laughed, um, but not too much to say there. Um, as far as the card itself, 
MJF retaining in the handicap match was not necessarily a surprise, um, but if you want to get this new team over, having them just go over like that, I don't know if that's what you want to do, but again, I don't know what they're planning on with it, with that team going forward in the future, whereas obviously MJF not defending the world title, having that handicap match, you want to keep them strong, it's kind of like the idea where when way back in the day when you had all three members of the Shield against CM Punk in a handicap match, and they're like, keep Roman sh looking strong. And CM Punk's like, well, maybe then the three guys wrestling me should go over, not me going over to all three. And it's like, no, 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 it's fine. Just keep Roman looking strong. Obviously, you want to keep MJF looking strong. You put him over. Great. You're not trying to get one of these two guys over as, as, a, as a single star. So, I mean, it made sense. The kangaroo kick so over, body slam so over. If you've seen his tweets afterwards, he hurt his neck, his back, his everything, body slamming, but in front of, you know, the 70,000 fans in Seattle. He's hilarious. I love where the character's going. I love him as a heel. I love him as a baby face. Um, I'm a big MJF fan, always have been, so this was just more great work. I just would have loved to have seen him in a singles title defense because now that's two back-to-back pay-per-views where we have ROH tag titles, which normally would be undercard. You might not ever even see them on a pay-per-view. Now we're getting those matches, even without Adam Cole, with him being injured here, rather than a big title program. I mean, I feel like you could have done... Obviously, the injury to Adam Cole happened during the Samojo title match, and it was a freak accident. But, I mean, that Samojo title match, you could have built that up for this, and maybe had the tag title defense earlier, and then MJF... Or, sorry, Adam Cole might not have even been injured in the first place. Um... That's just me personally. I like to see MGF defending the world title, make it mean something, have him headlining your pay-per-views because the man hasn't headlined everything since he won that title. That title has not always been the focal point of the show, in my opinion. And the tag team stuff is fun, fine. Adam Cole's injured now. I mean, you can keep him on TV and do stuff with him. WWF, back in the day when it was WWF, did that kind of stuff with Austin. When he had his neck injury, they still kept him on TV. So that's fine if you want to do that. I just really would like to see more focus, and I'm excited to see what they do with Jay White and MJF moving forward, because I really think that world title needs to be front and center on the show, and they really need to be pushing MJF as the guy. Um, I felt the same way when Kenny Omega was the champ. I really felt like you really need to push him as the guy. I thought they did a great job there. I would like to see someone like Kenny Omega get a nice babyface run um, with the title, and really just have him as the guy. You know, WWE for many years now has shown that Roman's our guy. He is the champion of champions. He's been champion. He'll main event the big pay-per-views and everything. I want the the AEW title to do the same thing. I want it to be main eventing the shows. I want it to be a big focal point. Um, but I definitely had no problem with the main event we got, as well as the other matches on the show. Um, so my matches of the show tonight, as I mentioned, Swerve Strickland uh, against Hangman Page was definitely one of my matches of the night. And then, of course, Brian Danielson. Um, that... That match was absolutely incredible. The match he had with Zack Sabre Jr. was definitely by far one of my favorite matches of the night as well. And of course, the main event being my other favorite. I would say those are the top three. I don't have any specific order, really just off the top of my head, because I enjoyed all three at the time for different reasons. Um, but let's get into that beautiful Brian Danielson performance with Zack Sabre Jr. It was a match we'd been we hoped to get back, I mean, over a year and a half ago. Um, at the first Forbidden Door pay-per-view, but we finally got it tonight. Uh, it was incredible to see, even with it, Brian Danielson probably still nursing a bit of an injury there. I thought they had a great match. It was a lot of fun to watch. It was a different style to a lot of AEW-style matches. But, I mean, for me, any Brian Danielson match you're getting on a pay-per-view, to me, is always going to be my top one, two, or three matches of the night because he's just that good. He's that incredible. And Zack Sabre Jr. showed that he can hang. He's one of the best in the world as well and really fun to watch. Um, now let's get into, of course, the very, very big, I know I'm skipping some of the matches here. I'm just wanting a short breakdown. I'm not going to go through every single match, just the ones that really stood out to me. Of course, I did briefly want to talk about the, um, the tag match between, um, what are they, what are they called now? Um, Don Callis's family versus what are they called? The golden jets we've got with, um, the golden lovers and Chris Jericho. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun. That match was great. Another something different. Uh, I, lo I love, really enjoyed the show for the variety of different styles of wrestling we got on the show. And I did really enjoy that six man because I like Kota, seeing Kota Bushi in any match. I like seeing Will Ospreay in any match. 
um, having the storylines between, you know, to intertwine week to week. We get the Kenny Omega against the family. We've got Chris Jericho against the family, who is specifically Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. I think their storyline's been been pretty decent as of late. So I really did enjoy the match. Um, surprised we're going having Kenny lose every pay-per-view match he's been in, on since leaving Don Callis. I guess they're building that as a bigger storyline so that when he finally does get his big win, it'll be at something big, I guess, at Revolution. Um, but I was really surprised by the outcome. I was surprised to see um, the Golden Jets, you know, bringing Kota Ibushi in and another loss at a pay-per-view so, was a little surprising to me. But, I mean, Will Ospreay is, is amazing, and I hope he ends up signing with AEW because what a talent. But And Sammy Guevara in his own right. Love to see him on a singles run. He's he's an incredible talent as well. So nothing but good things to say about that match. I did enjoy that very much. Again, just a little surprised by the outcome. Um, but I guess it's leading to what we're getting on Dynamite because I believe we're getting the Golden Jets or just Kenny and Chris Jericho against Sammy Guevara and Konosuke Takeshita on Dynamite where I'd assume they get their win back. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a great match as well. But for me, what stole the show, obviously, Darby Allen and um christian cage for the tnt title i got a chance i sat down my girl or my daughter came out and watched part of that or the majority of that match with me which was a nice change of pace she's not always into the wrestling but she got really into this match she really loves darby allen she loves sting she said where's sting where's sting i thought he was his friend so i had to explain to her why you know no one is at ringside and they're having the best two out of three falls match because i actually had forgotten that stipulation after the first fall and when darby got that surprise put the, you know, rolled up the turtleneck and got the got the roll-up. I thought that was the end of the match, and my daughter was celebrating. I was celebrating. I was like, wow. And then I was like, oh, right. It's a two out of three falls match. Totally forgot. And I thought 100% Darby Allen was winning that match and was going to get the hometown. You know, it's on last. It's the main event. I was really surprised that Brian Danielson wasn't in the main event with Zack Sabre Jr., which led me to believe because he wasn't. I said, okay, then likely... Are we going to get Adam Copeland at the end of the show? Are we going to see Edge? I thought, you know, if Brian Danielson's not ending that card in Seattle and given that, that uh, you know, feel good, go home moment for the crowd, then I was like, all right, Darby's got to be winning this title and it's going to be Edge costing Christian, the you know, it's going to be Adam Copeland costing Christian Cage, costing Jay the, the match. And I was wrong. I mean, he did show up, but I thought for sure Darby was going to retain the title. The swerve of Nick Wayne hitting him in the face of the title both dropped my draw and my daughter's because I was explaining the whole thing with Christian and Nick Wayne's mom. And I was like, oh, that's Nick Wayne. That's his, that's her son. And that's the lady in the front row. That's her son. And when he clocked Darby Allen with the title, she's like, why did he do that? I thought you said they were friends. Why did they do that to his friend? My daughter's nine, by the way, for reference, but was just so taken aback by it and couldn't believe her friend would do that. They, I think you, they really nailed it and got that, you know, got that emotion across because my daughter was not happy about it. She was furious. She loves Darby Allen and one of the few wrestlers she knows and she really likes. And then when, obviously, when he's getting beaten down at the end, when we had Sting come out, she was super excited to see Sting. Again, one of the few wrestlers she knows and really loves. Um, it was great to see. And then once he started getting beaten down, I was like, all right, here comes, obviously, I expected it. I didn't spoil anything for her. She also didn't know who Adam Copeland, who Edge was, nor did she know who Christian was going in that match. Um, but she she really enjoyed the match, as did I. We really loved it. And we're a little disappointed Darby Allen didn't win the title. But great end of the show. Great surprise. Obviously, you sent the crowd home happy, getting to see Adam Copeland. And I'm sure maybe he did some sort of speech to the crowd after the cameras went off the air. Um, but all in all, great show. Was it their best show of the year? I don't think so. I thought Forbidden Door was probably my show of the year for AEW this year. It was incredible. Um, all in, obviously, just the spectacle of all those people, those all those fans. Um, really incredible. So that would probably be my number two show for AEW of the year out of the year. Um, but yeah, I really did. I did love this pay per view. I thought it was really good, um, and those were definitely my top match of the show. I didn't want to make this a super multi-hour review of the pay-per-view or anything like that. I just wanted to give my thoughts, my feedback. Um, obviously, you'll be able to hear more of me as well as my fellow co-hosts on the WGC podcast tomorrow. 
Um, we should, I believe we're going to be going live and we should be giving our, we'll be giving our feedback and thoughts on the pay-per-view as well as the uh, most recent DLC that just came out for AEW Fight Forever, um, as well as our favorite wrestling games and what got us in, um, made us fans of wrestling as a whole and just going into a whole bunch of different topics. Uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow night, I believe live at, should be about 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, so stay tuned to that. And I will link all my co-hosts um, down below in the description for you so you can check all of them out as well. Um, but that's it for this one. Just wanted to give my thoughts and opinions on that wonderful pay-per-view, Wrestle Dream, that we got to see yesterday. Um, and if you didn't check out the post-fight press conference, some funny moments in there. I enjoyed hearing from Adam Copeland and reasons why he joined AEW. A um, little brief breakdown on that, basically. Obviously wanted to work with Uncle Jay, you know, his... Uh, his best bud. He wanted to work with Christian again. I'm sure that was a bucket list thing was just being able to get to work with him again in in the ring and against him as well as with him as well as getting to work with new young talent. I mean the speech was very similar to what you would hear like a Brian Danielson or a CM Punk said when they first came to AEW. A lot of the same kind of stuff. Fresh matches, fresh talent, getting to work with a Kenny Omega, getting to work with guys they'd never been in the ring with. Um, which surprised me was Adam Copeland's never been in a match with um, Claudio Castagnoli before. Didn't know that. Never knew. He never wrestled Cesaro. Um, but a number of guys that he's just excited to get in the ring with. As well as just helping younger grow younger talent. And I'm sure the uh, the paycheck didn't hurt either. Um, but yeah, it was great to see. Great to see they licensed uh, Edge's music. Um, he's got the entrance. He's got everything. So it looked great. Presentation was great. All in all, great pay-per-view. And like I said, if you haven't checked out the post-fight media scrum, there were some funny moments in there, and it was nice to hear from Brian Danielson, Swerve Strickland, a few other guys in there, Jericho Omega, Darby Allen, all the guys were on there. It was great. Um, Chris Statlander. Um, fun overall. Oh, yeah, and I guess I skipped through the Chris Statlander-Julia Hart match. I did enjoy it. I have never been really a huge fan of Julia Hart myself. Um, I did think she looked good in that match. Chris Statlander I've always been, has always been one of my favorite um, women wrestlers in AEW. I think she, she has a great look. I think she, um, she's very commanding in the ring, and she has a great presence about her. I think she's a great champion. Um, I look forward to seeing more of her. It was one of Julia Hart's best matches, but definitely not one of my favorite matches on the show. Um, not something that I would um, you know, put in my top top five matches of the show, but I did think... For Julia Hart, was probably one of her best performances, if not her best performance to date. Um, and for Chris Statlander, I mean, she always makes her opponents look good. So that was no surprise to me. Um, but again, just nothing I was going to write home to mom about. It was just, you know, paint by numbers. Very inexperienced um, Julia Hart, who looked better than she ever would had she not been in, in the ring with someone who's, who was as good as she is. So I'd love to see Chris Statlander get in there with people like, you know, a Mercedes Monet, someone who has more experience someone who is incredible in the ring, and see what kind of magic they can produce. That's what I'm holding my breath for. Those are the kinds of matches I want to see. Anyways, that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys tomorrow on the WGC podcast, and I hope you're all doing well, and we'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.